Hallo zusammen, I'm your Vlog Dave and today I want to react to a new video that was made by an American living in Germany and giving his reasons why he moved here. I'm really curious about this because it's by a YouTuber that's relatively new on YouTube. Uh, I've been in touch with him, he's a really really cool guy, I think his name is Eric and the channel name is Krautsalat, really cool name by the way, really like that. And today I want to give my own impression on this topic being a native German, uh, also being a German language teacher here on YouTube. So let's check out the video by Krautsalat, 10 reasons why I moved to Germany. So I'm gonna start the video in three, two, one, los. Ah, that's an interesting, cool intro. Guitar is always a plus. Welcome to Krautsalat. I am Eric, an American living in Germany. Welcome back to my channel. I am always asked, Hi. Why Germany? Why do I come here? Well, I put together a list of 10 reasons why I did. Number one, mm -hmm. the first one, a girl. That is why I started coming here to Germany. Perhaps quite obvious, it's typically the first joke that comes up. I met a girl, I came here, I visited, and I liked being here. That is really cool. I mean, of course, not what you might have expected, guys. Uh, you might have expected uh, another reason being mentioned first, like, oh, the beautiful landscapes and the great German dishes, Sauerkraut and all that kind of stuff, German beer, German bread, things we are famous for, uh, German castles and whatnot. But it was love. It's always down to personal taste, of course, but German girls and German women uh, are really, 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 um, well, likable uh, creatures. Uh, I would say uh, thumbs up for that choice. Number two, zwei. I felt at home. Hmm. When I came here just as a visitor and I stayed for a little while, this feeling of home was something that I didn't, I didn't quite know. Like I moved around in the US a lot mm. and I think this is something that I was really looking for, something I was searching for because when I felt it, I knew. I remember I was walking through the city. I can, I can take you to the street and the moment where I, I felt at home. Wow. It was wonderful. Wow. <laughs> that actually really touches me a little bit. Um, uh, to be honest with you, because I mean, we all want to feel at home uh, somewhere we belong. That really, I guess, would be the biggest compliment you can give to anyone, whether it's uh, a whole nation <laughs> um, or a nationality and people living in a country. That is, that is really, really, really impressive to say that. Um, Wow. I've not been to many other countries yet. I've not been to the US, for instance, although I would really love to go there at some point, and I will definitely and visit many other countries and parts of the world in the future, which I really haven't had the chance to yet. But simply from, um, well, traveling certain parts of Germany and visiting friends that live in other regions, other German states here in the Federal Republic of Germany, that is, even though I might find certain cities and environments really adorable and beautiful. Where I live in the Sauerland region, which is really famous and popular for its nature, I am glad that I can feel at home as well. It also goes to show that it doesn't has necessarily have to be where you're from, right? So for him, for Eric, uh, it can also be a whole different country and another culture, even though it might be sort of similar to Americans and the Western world. That is basically a huge compliment to Germany. From what I can tell, even though some people might say um, it's not like that and Germans might be a bit cold at first and a bit hesitant when it comes to meeting new people and getting in touch with them, that might also be true. But I think the biggest reason for that might be, from my experience and my point of view, the language barrier 
because many Germans, especially older Germans, are not really able to speak English all too well and all too fluently. Especially my grandparents' generation, for, for instance, um, they were taught Russian uh, and not English. So those kinds of things also come into play here, I guess. But when it's uh, when I'm talking about my generation, there is a much higher chance that people will also understand you and be, well, yeah, accept you with open arms in a way. Let's go on to number three, the music. If you watched my last episode, then you know. If you did not watch it, go back and watch I it. I will. Because I talk all about music. Nice. So with music, I felt something that drew me in and I couldn't let it go. Yeah, feeling the same about that one. Although I have to say, uh, to be honest, um, well, judging from um, the share of English lyrics versus uh, German songs that I personally listen to uh, on a daily basis, for instance, I would actually have to live in America because most songs that I listen to and most bands, most artists, are from there or at least they um, make songs with english lyrics as opposed to german lyrics i also like many german bands don't get me wrong i love many of them but i still listen to way more english songs and music which is ironic in a way because it is true uh, and it's not only me saying that as a German linguist, a language teacher in a way. It's just also my personal perception. German can be a really, really poetic language. But maybe it's the perspective of a native speaker more than uh, one that a foreigner might have. It's easy to get a bit, well, pretentious with that um, and certain phrasings, and I guess. But on the other hand, that might also be true for many English lyrics, but Germans might not really see it like that because it's not their mother tongue. I don't know if you get what I wanted to say with this, but uh, if you did, hey, if you did not, wow. And of course, I will also watch that video, Eric. I definitely will because music is my biggest passion uh, besides, well, teaching a language and helping other people with that. So yeah. Looking forward to that. Number four, the cost of living. This is something mm. a, a little less personal. The US is, is really big. So the cost of living is obviously gonna change no matter where you are. But in the areas where I was living, once I saw the difference between like the rent, um, daily costs, something like a cell phone, mm -hmm. I was paying almost a hundred dollars a month for my stupid cell phone. Wow. I come here and I currently pay about 30 euro. That is really interesting. I know for a fact that many Germans are actually really, um, well, dissatisfied with uh, German mobile systems and those kinds of things and smartphone contracts with uh, bandwidth regar regarding their data and what they can do with that, LTE uh, nets and stuff like that. When you compare Germany to many other countries and many really uh, industrial developed countries even and way less developed countries, we are ranked way below on that list and uh, in the midst to low region. Having a steady connection when you are going by train, for instance, can be quite a problem in Germany, which I think is a pity especially considering we're living in the year 2020 that's uh, actually turning into a little rant uh, from my end right now, which doesn't have anything to do with uh, Eric, of course. Uh, but that's why I think that is an interesting point. I mean, just um, monetarily and comparing those things, I can totally see his point. And uh, 30 euros is a pretty, um, well, usual amount but yes on the other hand germany still struggles with uh, that technology and making that available to um, in a high quality standard which also means for instance in many other countries you have like an unlimited data base when it comes to your monthly use of uh, bandwidth with your cell phone 
Whereas in Germany, it's really strictly limited in comparison, uh, for the most part at least. That is a pity. I mean, we're one of the richest countries in the world, most developed countries in the world, and we can't manage to have a proper, a fair bandwidth contract system right here, a structure that is, in my opinion, one of the biggest cons when it comes to Germany as a, digital, a digitally developed country. Along with that, we go into number five, fünf, healthcare. Mm -hmm. This is an easy one. Also a very big topic of debate right now yeah. in the US yeah. is healthcare and costs. The girl that I first started coming here to visit, I compared the paychecks and the amount of money that comes out and it was relatively close. Like for mm -hmm. my paycheck, the money was going all over and I still didn't have the best health care. It was once it came out of my check, I still had other things to pay for. But here, all of the money went to one place and I saw what one could get. Here, if you are sick, you can go to the doctor. You don't have to worry about missing work and losing money. And in the US, if you get sick, you go to the store, you buy some Dayquil and you get to work because if you miss work, you lose your money. Even though I have ranted about that certain other topic before, like the bandwidth thing, uh, bandwidth structure in Germany when it comes to cell phones. On the other hand, this right here is one of the biggest pro arguments when it comes to living in Germany, I guess. You can bitch about many things in Germany and many Germans bitch about many things happening in Germany. There are many things to, that could be improved, but the healthcare system is so well established and so well structured here in Germany that I would consider it one of the biggest pro arguments for moving here. The steady and well established healthcare system Germany has is, yeah, top notch. In Germany, you have to have a health insurance. That might come as a shock to some Americans, I guess, which might be more conservative and think, oh, well, but I want to choose if I want to have a health insurance and whatnot. If you want to do that, that's fine, but the, don't bitch, bitch around if you can't really uh, afford staying home for one week if you're sick and you are forced to go to work then. It's as easy as that. You might agree with this, you might disagree, but that's just my personal take on that. I'm really, really happy, especially in these days, honestly, uh, filming this during the Corona crisis and stuff that I am living in Germany and not in certain other countries. Then again, I also have to be fair and I want to be fair. It's not a fault of the citizens. First and foremost, it's uh, mistakes being made by the politicians and the political structures and systems. My two cents. Number six. Six. Urlaub. Vacation. Oh, yeah. Here in Germany, uh, so much more time is given compared to the U.S. I've got, I've got friends in the U.S. that mm. have really nice jobs and they do get four weeks vacation, but also mm -hmm. so much more work. I've had times in my life where I had to work six or seven days a week. Wow. And then only two weeks vacation for the year. That really surprises me uh, because I didn't know that. I mean, what I did know is that as opposed to Germany, where you have a day like Sunday, where you don't work usually apart from a few specific stores and uh, those kinds of things like bakeries, gas stations. But apart from those specialties uh, and exceptions, Sundays, der Sonntag, die Sonntage, well, that is a day off. No one works on a Sunday in Germany. It's the end of the week, by the way. Uh, whereas I think in the US, if I'm not mistaken, the Sunday is like the first day of the week. And in Germany, Mondays are considered the first days of the week. I think that's correct. Uh, I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. 
uh, or Eric, feel free to correct me if you're watching this. When it comes to companies in Germany, for instance, the company that I work for, many of them have a five day week from Monday to Friday. Some of them might also have like a six day week from Monday to Saturday. I'd say for a usual full time job in Germany, it's usually between 35 to 40 hours per week and around about eight hours of work per day. For instance, the company that I work for, I'm working 40 hours a week, eight hours a day. Also regarding holidays that can also differ from, I don't know, um, let's say 20 holidays per year to 30 or even more than 30, uh, especially in more industrial um, based jobs. Number seven, Sieben, the quality of food. This is interesting. You wouldn't expect mm. it, but the US has so much fake food. It's horrible. There's a reason why so many people are fat because the crap that they're eating is, is fake. You go buy a frozen pizza in the US and it tastes like the cardboard box that you just pulled it out of. And here it, it tastes like a real pizza. And then some like huh. McDonald's. I eat at McDonald's again. I have a better diet than this. I'm just using an example, so don't be too hard <laughs> yeah, yeah, on me. Of course, but McDonald's, Eric, of course. Yeah, the yeah. food is so much better here. Of course. Like it, I just you kidding. go to McDonald's in the U.S. and you hate yourself because you know you just put some nasty shit into your stomach. Yeah, many Germans also struggle with that. They like it, but on the other hand, they don't want to eat it. But then they do because they like it, but they don't like it at the same time. And it's a never ending, like a vicious circle. The struggle is real for Germans as well. But from what I can tell, I mean, that sort of fits with what I have heard from um, many other people that have experienced and tasted German food that it's of quite a high quality. And I've especially heard that regarding bread. And I mean, we are famous for having so many different kinds of bread more than pretty much any other country in the world as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the same is true for German beer, uh, like alcoholic beverages, especially beer, because we have das Reinheitsgebot which basically says that it's only allowed to use, uh, I think, three basic uh, ingredients for beer. Thumbs up for German food and drinks, I guess. Appreciate it. And number eight, Acht, the weather. Believe it or not, <laughs> I threw this one in just because it's a bit funny. Okay. Nobody here in Germany would expect me to say that I came here for the weather. Yeah. True. Especially when I say Very that true. I moved here from Florida, where I lived for about 12 years. Now, I will make my point with this. Florida was too goddamn hot. I'm sorry. Ah, okay. Florida is great for a lot of people, but unless you go to the beach, you're not really outside enjoying it. Mm. There is at, at the moment today, it's it's a shitty rainy day, but that happens. I, I still rode my bike today. The weather here, at least in this part of Germany where I live, it's nice to go out and enjoy it. Mm. Like the, the air feels good to breathe. You're really right about this. I didn't expect that to be mentioned. But I can see your point, definitely. Especially when, also when it comes to other countries uh, regarding humidity, uh, high humidity especially, because Germany has a sort of, um, well, how should I put it? It's not too warm most of the time and it's not too cold most of the time. When it's summer, I mean, it can go up to, let's say 40, 41, 42 degrees Celsius every now and then, but not always. Um, like you will also have many summer days that are like, I, I don't know, 25, 26, 27, 28 degrees at a max. I take it as it comes and just enjoy it. All right, number nine, comfort within the culture. Some things that I hmm. quickly learned, um, the way of life, like getting around the city by bicycle or by foot if you need to go, public transportation. For me, having spent most of my life needing to get around by car, I really fell in love with 
being able to hop on a bicycle and go wherever I needed to yeah. in the city. Like it's, it's, it's something quite simple. I know most people don't put any thought into it, but for me, this was a really big deal. I was so sick of driving a car in the US. It was everywhere, but to just hop on the bike and go through the city. That is true. I mean, you can do that in many German towns and cities. Uh, also, of course, villages as well. There are even many ways especially made for bicycle uh, drivers. On the other hand, I mean, you also have like, for instance, the pedestrian zone. I'm living close to it and you're not allowed to uh, ride your bike through the ped pedestrian zone. I mean, it's interesting that you say that because as some of you might know, and I guess you are also aware of that, Eric, uh, Germany is really big when it comes to cars and and uh, the, also the history of cars and engineering, car engineering and those kinds of things, Mercedes, VW, BMW, uh, Porsche, Audi, uh, many, many famous and uh, internationally acclaimed and popular car brands are from Germany. And Germans still love their cars, but I think, especially right now, in these days, uh, these times, Many Germans also think around, I guess more and more Germans also lean towards more modern technologies, uh, way more environment friendly ones. Number 10, to wrap up this list, I'm happy. Uh, quite simple. <laughs> don't need to explain that. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain that one. The culmination of the nine previous reasons resulted in me feeling a happiness that I did not experience in 37 years of living in the US. Wow. Once again, I mean, <laughs> coming from a German's perspective here, thanks for those kind words regarding our country and uh, our nation <laughs> in a way. Uh, greatly appreciated, at least from my end. Just some anecdote. Uh, to end this video with as, as well. In German, you can actually sum up the two words lucky and happy, which can mean sort of the same, but don't necessarily have to. You can sum those up in one single German term, which is glücklich. You are glücklich. I also am with uh, having watched that video. So thanks for making this and giving us your impression, your um, opinions on things, Eric. Because I think, I personally think it's always interesting to hear about those things and getting a new perspective. I think that's what it's all about at the end of the day. And that's also what I'm interested in when it comes to these things, to just learning more about other cultures in comparison to your own and what you've known. Feel free, guys, to check out Eric's channel, Krautsalat. Really, really awesome. And... Uh, who knows, maybe at some point in the future, there will also be a collaboration with the two of us. Uh, I would be really down for that. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. I'm your Vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.